I'm gonna find. And I'm gonna kill. Every last one of them. And that is absolutely what she did. The cycle of violence began early on in Ellie's life and got a whole lot more present as she got older. I'm taking a look at every life Ellie snuffed out, whether it be human or infected. Honestly, my first idea for this video was to examine how many deaths Joel is responsible for, but that 20 year gap includes an untold amount of death, which would make providing an accurate number for his actions impossible. If you still want to see that regardless, just let me know in the comments below and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Ellie is born into the world several years after the infection began. Using the HBO series, we know she was born by violence, with her mother being bitten shortly before her birth, which is the catalyst for making her immune to the cordyceps infection. From there, she's placed in the Boston QZ and eventually meets Riley. In the American Dreams comic, she never actually kills anything, although she does get an assist when she hits a dude with a brick. That allows Riley the time to Jackson Pollock his brains all over the ground. The next point in her timeline is the Left Behind DLC that bounces between her time in Boston and trying to keep Joel alive after his impalement. While in Boston, Riley convinces Ellie to sneak out to the mall and takes her on the best date of her life as they explore a Halloween store, break some car windows, pretend to play in an arcade, and ride a carousel. But things go all cattywampus when infected crash their party. There's too many of them and they're far too fast to outrun, and that forces Ellie into her very first kill at the age of 14. Immediately after that, she goes for the double kill to save Riley and does it again again soon after in an absolutely brutal fashion. At this moment, Riley points out Ellie has been bit, while showing off her matching wound. They sit side by side, dreading what's to come, but Riley takes a somewhat optimistic approach that will never come to be. You know, we can be all poetic and just lose our minds together. It's implied in the game and confirmed in the show that Ellie winds up killing Riley. We know she waited until she turned before Ellie kills her first girlfriend, and continues on with an immense amount of survivor's guilt. The next time we see her is when Marlene unloads her on Joel and Tess. They're tasked with smuggling her out of the Boston QZ and into the hands of the Fireflies, so they can escort her cross country to Salt Lake City. Of course, things don't go as planned, and Joel's guilt tripped into becoming Ellie's post-apocalyptic bodyguard by a dying Tess soon after they discover Ellie is immune. He does so reluctantly, and refuses to provide a weapon. They continue on like that until their journey is temporarily upended when some hunters attack them in Pittsburgh. This leads to them being split up after Joel tumbles down an elevator shaft that forces him into the creepiest section of the game and into a perilous fight against another man that got the jump on him. While Joel is being shown the proper way to hydrate, he's saved by Ellie. I shot the hell out of that guy, huh? A bit later, Joel entrusts her with a rifle so she can provide cover fire while he takes on a group of hunters blocking their path. Now at this point, she might not actually kill anybody, or she can kill all of them if you exercise some extreme patience. Everyone's playthrough will be different, and in mine, she successfully shot down one guy. Oh, got it. Even though the number can change here, I like to think Ellie would get at least one kill during this part. It doesn't make sense thematically for her to not do anything while Joel does all the work. She's a little rascal, and you know damn well she'd be popping off here. She proves herself capable, and Joel finally trusts her with a firearm, and the next time she uses it is during the sniper sequence towards the end of the Pittsburgh chapter. Joel clears the area of hunters, but the noise brings dozens of infected to the neighborhood, and we watch as Ellie shoots down two infected before she helps Henry and Sam escape. After watching their agonizing death, we skip forward to Wyoming, where Joel attempts to pass Ellie off on Tommy. Their compound gets attacked, but no one is killed by Ellie during or after when she runs off in a fit. Eventually, Joel agrees to continue his long as shit escort mission, and they wind up at the University of Eastern Colorado. A tussle leads to Joel getting gravely injured, which requires Ellie to step up in a big way and become his protector. She shoots four of the unknown attackers as she leads Joel to their horse. This is where the rest of the Left Behind DLC takes place. Ellie rummages through a nearby mall trying to find medical supplies to keep Joel alive. You can get through this section with a very small amount of kills by sneaking by most of the enemies and pitting infected against human, which is fun to watch transpire. They heard us. Throughout the mall, Ellie comes away with 39 kills in all, with 18 of those being from the same group that attacked them at the university. She graduates from a rookie to a seasoned vet in a very short amount of time here. 
but what's to come is far worse. Because she shoots a poor unsuspecting Bun Bun. This marks the first animal death, but when she spots something far larger, she pursues it and nails it with an arrow. Tracking the injured deer confirms its death and introduces Ellie to David and James. She offers to trade some meat for some medicine. As James runs back to retrieve some, Ellie and David sit awkwardly by a fire until the infected swarm their position. This is another part of the game where you can let David get all the kills, but nobody got time for that, and Ellie would assuredly do what's necessary to survive here, which is alleviating 41 mushroom people from their miserable existence. Then just when she feels safe, David reveals he and his group have been looking for her. She's able to get away, but she's easy to track in snow and leads them directly to Joel's location. She heads out to divert their attention and stabs the neck of her attacker before leading the rest away from Joel. Her horse is shot and she's thrown from it, leading to a section where she eliminates 15 of David's search party. Regardless of her efforts though, she's captured by Captain Creepy and wakes up in a cell realizing the danger she's in, whether that's being butchered for lunch or the implications of David's dirty mind. Unbeknownst to Ellie, Joel is awake and feeling fine enough to kill some folks. However, all she knows is she needs to do whatever she can to stay alive. She uses the bite mark on her arm to distract James and David in order to deliver a slice to James's neck, adding yet another one of these cannibals to her kill tally. We begin another section that can be fully stealth, but in my case, Ellie uses her newfound battle prowess to kill nine more of David's crew, before she's forced into her final confrontation with the pedo people eater. That caps off an intense part of the game that traumatizes Ellie deeply. Joel by now becomes a fatherly figure and escorts her across the Rockies into Salt Lake City, where the fireflies have a way to cure the cordyceps fungus at the cost of her young life. We all know what happens here. Joel can't accept losing her and rampages through the hospital, killing everyone in his path and pulling Ellie out of there and into the community in Jackson, Wyoming. Part 2 shows a series of flashbacks throughout Ellie's three-day Seattle excursion. It gives us some insight into Ellie's distrust of Joel, stemming from his lie at the end of part one. In one flashback, Tommy teaches her how to shoot his sniper rifle, and she takes out 14 infected from a long distance. She leaves with Joel and fights off six more before she confronts him face to face about what happened in Salt Lake City. He maintains the lie that fractures their relationship, which only gets worse in the next flashback when she finds the truth at St. Mary's Hospital, and tells Joel she is done with him. A couple more cap off the game, giving us a glimpse of the night before Joel's death. We learn that Joel has been harassing Jesse about Ellie's patrol routes, giving her the easy one so she doesn't encounter much danger. The night ends in drama, and the final scene shows Ellie telling Joel she'll try to forgive him. The next day, Ellie wakes up late for patrol, where she fights alongside Dina and nets 13 infected kills before Blizzard snows them in. Eventually, Jesse finds them a little less clothed than before, and informs them Joel and Tommy have gone missing. Ellie locates an occupied cabin, and finds Joel getting ruthlessly beaten by a group of strangers. He's killed in front of Ellie's eyes as she's held down. She's spared and left with some more intense drama that sends her down a path of revenge. She sets out towards Seattle in search of the people that murdered Joel. Their day is pretty damn eventful as they get to the city. They find it mostly abandoned, with only infected to contend with. Eventually, they're ambushed and blown off their horse. Ellie is brought back to a school for questioning and finds herself face to face with Jordan, the man she cut in the night of Joel's death. Dina arrives just in time to save Ellie, and in turn needs some saving herself, leading to the first of Abby's crew to go down. What follows is a trail of bodies consisting of 54 humans and infected alike. The day is capped off with a too close for comfort moment that reveals to Dina that Ellie is immune to the disease. She admits to a surprise of her own growing in her belly, which leads to Ellie beginning day two on her own. She navigates the Hillcrest neighborhood in search of Tommy so they can join forces, but instead runs into Jesse. She takes him back to the theater and leaves him there with Dina while she tracks down another member of Abby's friend group. They introduce dogs into the fold here and make me feel like a sack of shit for killing 11 of them. Of course, there's plenty of infected along the way as their death count hit 38 by the end of day two. But the real shocker here is that Ellie shoots, stabs, burns, blows up, and tortures 91 members of the WLF and a new faction known as the Seraphites. The final death of the day includes Abby's friend Nora, who is on the other end of a very painful death in order for Ellie to find out Abby's location. She gets back to the theater, 
clearly feeling the horrible after effects of what she just did, and tells Jesse and Dina that Abby is holed up at the aquarium. They get some rest before Jesse and Ellie take to the streets and work together against the WLF, their dogs, and a few more infected. They hear over the radio that Tommy was spotted somewhere that is not the aquarium, and Jesse urges Ellie to come with them so they can all work together. But Ellie feels she's close to wrapping this up and goes her own way. This bloody decision results in an increase to Ellie's kill count that contains at least one member of each faction. Ellie finally gets to the aquarium and is forced into killing good girl Alice before she confronts a couple of Abby's crew. She holds them up and tries telling them they can survive this encounter as long as they tell her where Abby is. She lets them get a little too close and finds herself in a scuffle that ends with Owen getting shot and Mel and her unborn baby getting shanked. Tommy and Jesse show up mere moments later and escort her back to the theater. Abby soon pops in uninvited though, killing Jesse and wounding Tommy in the process. The face-off between Abby and Ellie is an intense cat and mouse game that finishes with Muscle Mommy bashing her up real good and leaving her there. A few months pass and we pick up with Ellie and Dina living on a ranch just outside of Jackson. Abby's survival eats away at Ellie and the thought that she's out there pumping iron still is too much to bear. So Ellie leaves and tracks her down in Santa Barbara. She nets 65 more kills clearing this city of more infected and their violent group known as the Rattlers. She gets caught in a trap which leads to her using her immunity as an advantage, resulting in the death of one of her would-be captors via clicker teeth. She uses the other's gun against him and the entire compound of Rattlers in order to find Abby. They go fisticuffs in an emotional duel that ends with a couple fingers going missing and an emaciated Abby being spared while the toll of everything overwhelms Ellie. The last we see her is back at the ranch house outside of Jackson. She leaves Joel's guitar there and sets off towards the city. Within a five year span, the majority of Ellie's teenage years are spent with blood on her hands. She heads back to Jackson, Wyoming with a total of 493 dead bodies in her wake. The majority of Ellie's kills come in part two in her pursuit of Abby, with the WLF taking the most losses. Until part three is made, we leave Ellie there with a massive amount of dead bodies behind her. Thanks as always for watching. I'm King DeShane, signing off for now.